So thank you for joining us everyone today. Um, it's really nice that you've been able to join us for this event. As I was just saying, OneNote and the Class Notebook is a really useful tool and I always think these sessions are um, either appreciated in the moment or always well, uh, they're reviewed again and, and the recordings are always watched back. So, um, you know, whatever Afsha and David talk about today will be of great use and value. So my name is Jo Stone and I'm an EdTech uh, lead professional for Discovery. And I also work for Kibworth um, Primary School as well. Um, Kibworth is a DFE EdTech demonstrator school and it helps to support other schools with the EdTech journey. So um, if you do want any information about that, I will talk about that at the end of this webinar today. But today this webinar is focusing, as I say, on the class notebook. Afsha and David are going to be talking about the class notebook and um, what it is. They're going to tell us um, why they think that we need certain structures in that notebook, what useful features we might need to use and the inclusive tools. And also they're going to um, explain how we can link the class notebook to assignments and why it's very useful for in the in, um, in school lessons as well as for homework as well and obviously hopefully not but remote learning too um, but we hope we're, we've gone past that now and uh, obviously we're doing most things in school which is great so this evening um, as I say we've got um, Afsha Dean with us Afsha is the um, mathematics lead professional for Discovery Schools Trust and um, as well she also works with the maths hub mastery special um sorry she is a math school mastery specialist and also part of the professional um and nctm and she's a professional lead there um david works at walden hill primary school and david has many many hats that what probably i won't be able to remember all of them but i know is um doing lots of support work with um for our skip program as well as um being well working in year four as well so very busy i will let david probably explain um all of his other roles in a moment um but i think after you're going to start this evening and uh begin with explaining what the classroom notebook um class notebook is yeah thank you everyone as uh, joe mentioned i'm Afsha. i'm like i said like joe's already mentioned uh i'm the lead professional for mathematics across the trust so i'm really happy to be here to share my kind of experience and also the use of the class notebook so let me just share my screen um joe if you could just let me know if the screen is actually sharing that would be really helpful yeah absolutely yeah that's coming through really okay. well let yeah me. okay just give me one second thank you so joe's already kind of mentioned um that this evening, uh, myself and David are talking about Class Notebook, um, and I'm very aware that we've all got different types of experiences with uh, OneNote and Class, class One Notebook. So um, I'm going to cover the basics of what Class uh, Notebook is, um, which some of you may be really aware of. So um, it might be it's going to be really good to go over some of those basic bits, and then I'm going to go through how specifically how it might be used in terms of a math element with my kind of math experience bringing bringing that to the element here. So um, let's get straight into it. So our first kind of question that we need to kind of establish is what is Class uh, Notebook? Um, essentially, it is an online platform. Uh, where a teacher can create essentially what we would have tangibly in our classrooms as books, as handouts, but all stored into a central space. Um, and within that, there are three kind of key elements within the class uh, one notebook, which is the content library, uh, which is basically like a, a storage space where you'd have lots of different um, worksheets or things that children can use and anything you'd want them to look back on or use within the lesson, um, but you wouldn't want them to edit in any way. So they can see it, but they can't to kind of edit it in any type of way, like a, almost like a PDF kind of form. Um, you then have a collaboration space where essentially you can um, upload a page to all the pupils or to a group um, and children can access the same page together and collaborate and I will go into more detail about the content library and the collaboration space in the in the next few slides and the kind of the main kind of idea of the third element which is the student notebook which is where um, it's kind of where that's where pupils can actually have the independent work and that's a shared space between the teacher and the pupil um, 
and that's how we kind of record their kind of worksheets that they may do independently or the work that they may do independently. So the key essential bit here is that although we're talking about class one notebook, you may also have a, a book as well as a jotter in terms of math. So it's really interesting, essential that some of the bits that I'm sharing with you right now aren't to replace everything that you might have in a book. So as a jotter or other things like that, but I'm just going to focus more about how this can be used um, in a math kind of aspect. Um, the platform can also be used um, in lots and lots of different ways and you can add lots of things to it and it's all stored in the same place. So for it's easy to kind of collate um, forms and quizzes and um, places to kind of store homework um, and lots of different handouts and things. Mentioning all of those really good things I've just mentioned about how great class one notebook is, which it is. Um, it's, it's also, um, however, if it's not organized in a very clear manner, it can actually cause barriers of using it effectively. So it's really essential that as practitioners, as teachers, as SLT, um, or even uh, parents that are using it at home, for it to be really easy to navigate through for pupils. Um, and as we're thinking about a successful class notebook, where we would think we need to be thinking about using clear names for folders in terms of the subjects that we teach, terms in which we're teaching it, weeks, uh, and kind of in, even individual lessons and how that's organized. I've got a few examples coming along in the next few slides, and I know Dave has probably got some of the bits as well that he would like to add to that, but it's to make it as seamless as possible for both teachers and for pupils to use it so it is efficient and can kind of get the best out of class notebook by having a really clear structure. So in terms of math, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the structure would look like. So as you can see here on the screen, um, this is a snip of a team and within the team it's got um, the class notebook here. Um, within the class notebook here you can see some folders and now at the bottom they call them sections. I'm just going to put my pointer on, just be a little bit snazzy with so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> so um, as you can see here you've got a few folders here um, and underneath you've got pupils names. I hope you can see that it's rather small on my screen but I hope it's not that small on yours. I will show my class notebook after this so you can see it in a bit uh, in an enlargement kind of view. Um, once you've added all your pupils, so when you create your class notebook, you can add all your pupils and they'll come up here. Now your pupils won't be able to see all these lists of names. They'll only be able to see their own, um, which is really important to know. Um, and you can either access this in your actual team, like this one is here and in an actual team, and you can also access it on your desktop. Um, so here it's kind of screenshot within your team. And um, like I said here, you can have all the um, pupils folders underneath. And this is really essential about what this looks like from the pupil view as well as for teachers. Now for maths in itself, the, the content library, um, which is bits here. So you, as you can see in every team, in every kind of class um, notebook, you'll have these folders here that you can't really replace. So you've got your collaboration space, your content library, and then you've got your um, teacher only, which I'll show in a moment what that looks like. So the content library, like I've shared before, is essentially a place to store things that you might want children to use, like prompt sheets. Uh, for example, in maths, really good kind of ideas are like, for example, if you're teaching fractions, you might want fraction wall in there um, for them to go back and use or um, a knowledge organizer or even slides that you might want that are really going to be informative that might break down the steps like a success criteria on certain uh, methods that you might be teaching them or even to create capture really good models of pupils work that so for example a good written reasoning in the example that you want children to go back and kind of reread and then kind of edit their own work from that so it's a really good space to kind of capture different things especially things that might help them within their learning um, so here are a few examples we've got here is the example that I've mentioned before about a fraction wall with some key language and some key things that you want them to remember. And that can be used as a kind of a visual aid. Um, also here, a knowledge organizer with um, some key vocabulary, some really good representations that you might want them to go back and look at and remind themselves of here, like here, like a regular and irregular shape, but also here about what a net is. Um, then also some key facts that children often forget, but they need to go back and they're not trying to look for it on the wall or they're not trying to look for it in other places. So here's a really good central place to keep all those kind of really key things that in maths, we often don't have enough space to kind of have around our walls to kind of celebrate all those things or remind ourselves of those things. 
Um, one really good idea here is actually taking a picture of your working wall that you've got. So your working wall that you build up throughout your unit, for example, here, it's got place value. Just taking a picture of that and then storing that into your content library is a really good way of not losing that journey that you've had together as a group. And again, essentially, you know, seeing the success criteria within there, seeing those models that you've drawn together and having some really key kind of aspects that you don't want them to forget. And again, it's giving that ownership for children to know that that's in there as well so they can access that whenever. And it doesn't have to be, oh, that used to be on the wall and now it's now it's vanished. So um, that's a really good space to kind of create um, like a bank of your working walls that you, you've kind of established within your classrooms and then they kind of get taken down and then the new unit comes up. <laughs> Um, the collaboration space, um, as mentioned earlier, this is a space where either you can open this up to everybody in your class or you can actually select smaller groups of children to work on the same thing. Um, this is really good for group work, um, for project work or for brainstorming ideas in mass. Essentially, it's um, really good to kind of share strategies or share ideas or make like a success criteria of building up some types of ways of solving problems. So, for example, here, um, we've got a problem here for children to think about. So here it says, what is the size of angle A? Um, and if I kind of showed that to the whole of the class and they've all got their um, class notebooks up, they'd be able to share their strategies and we'd, that would kind of appear up on the board of all their different ideas coming all around that. And as a teacher, you'd be able to facilitate that and kind of get children to talk about their ideas or talk about who is efficient, um, talk about different ways of approaching that. And it's a really good way of children seeing all strategies or all kind of shared ideas in one place. Um, you can also, you can start on it and come back to it uh, and work on it as a project. And um, the whole class can see it all in the same time live. Um, so that's a really good element of being able to use that collaboration space in terms of maths, in terms of solving problems, looking at different strategies, sharing that and using it as a project based uh, shared space that you have there. Um, the class notebook, as I said earlier, it's a shared space between the teacher and the individual pupil um, and they kind of access their own work within that. And essentially it's, it's predominantly used um, to prepare your kind of worksheets, um, but more on a platform where children can apply their learning um, individually and you can see how independent they've been and where, where they've been successful, where they need to work on. Um, it's also a place where you may want to upload your slides um, for pupils to kind of work through and add their thinking throughout the lesson. So I'll give you a few examples of that in a moment. So the structure here um, as a mass structure, the, the best way I've seen it being used is where the um, underneath each pupil, you can see if the child, if you click on the child's name here, you've got all of the folders underneath there and all of those folders are linked to each subject. So you've got PSHE computing and as you can see, you've got maths further down. Um, once you click on maths, you've then got some further folders within that that are organized. So it makes it really clear in terms of your subject area. Then from your subject area, you can then find each half term so that you haven't got all of your year's work all in one place, because that would be very hard to organize. Um, the way that I've seen it best organized is having it half termly. So if I click on the next bit there, so for example, autumn two, oh, that's gone. <laughs> if I click on that autumn two, then as you can see here, from the, the sections on your left, and then when you click on the section that you actually want, so here autumn two, then on the left, this kind of right column next to it comes up with the different pages that the children can actually access within that section. And as you can see, they've got a list of titles and dates uh, here that I think has been organized really well is by having the date first and then the kind of summary of what that learning uh, page is about. So this has got the 13th of the 12th, 2021 and then coordinates. So it's really clear to see what that page of learning would be. Um, and also you can add your lesson slides to that as well. So here is our, here are some examples of that. So we've got here. This is an example of where an, uh, an example that I have done myself in terms of teaching. And I've just snipped from my own PowerPoint slides um, where children would have had an opportunity either to do it on a whiteboard, but I've replaced it from doing it on a whiteboard into doing it in their class notebook. And so, for example, you can see here the retrieval practice and the in focus and then like like the your turn slides as um as our approach is more of a ping pong approach you have small steps 
that kind of build up towards that independent activity. So I've always found it really useful to snip certain parts of the PowerPoint and kind of create its own um, sample of that so children can interact with that within the lesson. And this helps really for AFL, to children can self-mark as they normally would. Um, instead of doing it on a whiteboard, it's not lost, it's, it's saved into their class notebook. And then also, this is what an independent sheet might look like, where they've got the, um, the, the title and the date at the top. Then we've got a, kind of an, a guided practice question to begin with, used as AFL. And then after that, once you've done your assessments, you can see these three columns here. So this is to help children to kind of be a bit more fluid in which tasks they might start on with. So depending on whether it's new learning, you may want children to start on these kind of more closed kind of fluency retrieval kind of based questions before they move on to the mastery where they're open ended and they've got missing gaps and they've got to think a little bit deeper. And then you've got more of a challenge, but children can kind of uh, do what you think where they are in their terms of where they are in their learning. You could choose where children would start and also you can use um, this space also to have um, helpful tips so this has got a little bit of a reminder of them to remember what the procedure is there to think about how to plot coordinates you can also scroll really really far onto the right and input some some videos or some other types of things that children can click on and use for example you could embed um, some digital resources there so they can access um, some online resources that might be useful digitally if that's going to be useful for them in that lesson so you can be really interactive with it here i know this has got snips of pictures but actually you can be really uh, interactive with it and import forms um, or a quiz or a kahoot or other elements that you know we use interactively within the classroom but we also want children to use as well um the teacher only space i'm just going to stop sharing this now and actually go into um, my actual class notebook and i'll show you where the teacher only space is um, and then also um, explain how to set up sections and a page within the class notebook um, so just give me one second so i'm going to stop sharing this now Joe, could you also just let me know whether it's come back up again, if that's okay? I was, gonna say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was, just, I was just going to say about the, those elements you've mentioned, especially the collaboration space. I think, think sometimes people avoid that area and it can be really powerful, especially, as you say, either whole class or would you say also for small groups? Absolutely, yeah. I think for small groups is really nice because they can share ideas. And it, the thing about doing it in smaller groups is that should, one child doesn't, doesn't Kind of have the paper and the pen and then it avoids people's from being passive learners and allowing two of them to kind of get on with it where actually if they've got their own kind of um space to be able to sh share their ideas there's no reason why they all can't be jotting ideas and listening to each other and collaborating so if it kind of removes that element of one or two pupils not contributing because i think it can easily happen in a group where you know you get more confident kind of learners that kind of really get into it and some quieter ones and without a teacher facilitating that that can be quite challenging sometimes um so yeah i definitely think group work really works works really well Definitely, um, like you say, inclusive, isn't it? Yes, more inclusive. inclusive. That's the right word, Joe. It's inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> it's inclusive. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, and that, and like you mentioned, it's probably something that we probably could incorporate more of and use more of that space um, to kind of kind of show off exactly what one it can be used for, as well as children doing things independently, but also doing things collaboratively as well. In terms of the teacher only section, so hopefully you can see my screen. It's got the um folders that i mentioned earlier so the collaboration space the content library the teacher only is a section where the children can't i suppose it says it says it for itself really it's just teacher only so the children can't see that section at all but this is where you would build up your sections and your folders and how you would want the pupils class one note to look um and within that you can start storing in pages that you want so for example here um, I haven't got many folders there, but that was deliberate so I can just be really succinct in what I'm showing yourself. So here is uh, spring one as a section. And then here I've got a page of um, something that I want to distribute to the pupils um, here. Uh, I've got the, the title and I've got the date and I'll show you in a minute how to make a section first. And then I'll show you what to do when you've made the pages, how to distribute those. So, for example, if I wanted here, if I was in, I created mass folders and I've got autumn one and then all of a sudden I'm in spring one. <laughs> um, 
if I want to add a section in there, so I want another folder for spring two, for example, at the bottom here, we can see this plus sign. So we would add that and here very simply, we would add spring two. So that is a section that you want. Now we can actually distribute this to the pupil. So at the moment, if I had a, if I uh, click on Adam's um, folder, um, at the moment, we should only see spring spring one and autumn one because I've just created the spring two folder here or section, so to speak. So as you can see, he's only got these two at the moment. So uh, he can't actually see that because this is just in the teacher only section. Um, so let me just show you what that looks like when you distribute that folder. It might take a little bit of time because when I've done it in the past, it doesn't come up immediately as I would expect it to, but it does appear. So um, if you distribute new section, and click on distribute. You can actually distribute to certain groups of children as well if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be the whole class, but I'm going to show you the whole class. And you can distribute. And as you can see here, it's loading. And it said it's distributed there. So let me just close that. It may take a couple of seconds to do its magic. It's not worked. <laughs> Let's give it a couple of seconds, but it should. OK, I'll show you how to make a page and then we'll go back and have a look at whether that's shared or not. It should have done. But in the spring two here, I can then actually start creating pages and your pages essentially are the independent kind of work that you'd want children to access. So I could type in today's date, um, 2022, um, and like we say here, I can put area and I can start creating this page here, um, like I've shown you before with all those different um, either worksheet examples that you want through questions that you want children to work through, as well as having hyperlinks in there of um, different websites or videos and that type of thing. So that can be really interactive here. Um, let me just see whether that's loaded. Not yet. Actually, sometimes it does take a while to sync. Though, it's me it? down. It's showing right. me up, isn't it? <laughs> and I just wondered, at the, at the top of your screen, does it say that it, it might be working offline at the minute? Can you see? Oh. Uh, so sometimes um, OneNote can do that as well, which is a good thing to point out, actually, so that people are aware. Sometimes syncing um, can take a, a few minutes. It's a not few too minutes, <laughs> but you could distribute the page once you're happy with what that page looks like. So you can build them in advance if you wish to, as many pages as you'd like, and tweak them and, and adjust them as and when your lessons are progressing, and then distribute them as and when you feel is most appropriate. So just as the same way as I distributed um, the new section, you distribute page um, and you would do distribute page. And you can also do here, it gives you a few other options here. So individual distribution, so for example, if it's just for a particular child, maybe who's got SEN, and you know that there's something that's different for them that you might want to distribute just to that child, not to everybody else. And also to a specific group if that's needed for whatever it is that you're teaching uh, and wanting them to show as an independent activity. Um, so distribute page. And then I will go to spring two. That will go into their folder. And then it will then. Distribute and as you can see, it's telling you how much of that is complete. So those are the kind of essential areas, really. So you can add as many sections as you wish here. And like you saw in the other example, it had all the subject areas first. And then within the subject areas, it then had further kind of sections within there to uh, create um, um, sections within that and then a page within it that you may want to distribute. Um, the last thing that I would like to mention um, Hang on, let me see if this actually distributes first before moving on. It's not. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let me just have a look at one more. No, that will distribute at some point <laughs> and it will show up. Um, but that's how you create sections and distribute them and pages and distribute those within your class notebook. Just give me one moment. I was also going to say on that distributing pages, um, Ash, Ash show, um, distributing across notebooks as well. So actually that's quite useful, especially if you're working in, say, two form and three form entry schools. It's good to be able to distribute to other people's, you know, sharing the workload, as it were. It makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? So it's a really good um, area to point out there. Um, so 
the last few slides are just to kind of summarise really um, how it can be used to support maths. And as I've mentioned before, using the actual um, sections element and the pages, we can create worksheets for children to interact with and to kind of move. And that can help with help sheets and things in already embedded within the actual page and the lesson that they're currently in, but also help sheets and things, resources that you want to collate uh, and kind of use. Children can kind of use that within the content library um, and store that as kind of like a filing system of all those different things that you want them to use and you can be very um, specific about that so for each subject you could have for example um, different areas within it so you could have like the knowledge organizers you can have help sheets for specific areas of uh, math for example like fractions and then you can have example of your working walls so you can really organize that, that content library as well so that it's really clear for pupils to navigate to see what they're looking for because um, as you can see, if you if you build up the whole of the content library, it can, that can also be very the structure of that would also be need to be really clear so that children can access that in a clear way. And the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, in terms of supporting maths, uh, in terms of quizzing and retrieval, inputting a form is it's always really easy way of kind of um, putting that either at the beginning or at the end in terms of assessment, uh, or actually just using as um, just a tool in terms of. Uh, at the end of end of assessment or beginning of an assessment, like a pre and post task, they can be used in that way as well. So you can either create a new quiz or you can actually build them before and then input them from from the, the forms that kind of come up uh, once you click on the icon within your actual class notebook. Um, and as you can see, you can just click on it and children will be able to navigate that. And I think they're they're really good at being able to access lots of those different things, uh, as kind of Joe mentioned earlier, that, you know, going through the lockdown and having that experience. Um, but it's just another way of bringing in that technology and it doing the work for us. I know it, within forms, you can actually put the right or wrong answers as well. And it can actually formulate and mark it for you as well. So that's always a good, that's always a bonus. Um, so thank you. That's great. Thanks, Asha. So much there. Um, I don't know whether there are any questions. I was um, so busy watching your presentation. I forgot to look at the, uh, the chat bar. Please um, put your questions in if you have any. I was just going um mentioning the structure there. It's really important, isn't it, to, as you said at the beginning, to have that structure so that it's really clear for everybody, but also as a whole school to probably discuss that as well as you're changing it, as you're tweaking it, so that it's quite consistent across the school. Would you agree? Absolutely. When we've done monitoring in some of the schools within our trust, um, actually the ones that have organised it really well to look at maths, it's just, it, I don't know how um, how easy that would have been if they hadn't organised it in that way. So the structure of that, of it being in folders and in subject specific, then in the terms, I think it really does support that because there's so much you can store. And if you start using class one note for all subjects, it can become very tangled very quickly if it's not organised in a really clear manner. Um, so the schools that I've seen use it really well um, and the, even going through and having looking at it and the children using it effectively is because of this the structure that they've put in place and really thought about how they want to lay it out and why they put certain things in certain places. To, like I said, accessibility for teachers, SLT and for people, external people that come in, <laughs> but then also for, for pupils as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Which really leads nicely on to what David's going to talk about now. And I know David is a master of actually creating a very clear structure in OneNote. Um, I would say he's probably um, one of the first in the trust to um, kind of come up with that, you know, not really nice, clear structure to work with. So, um, David, we're very uh, lucky to have you here this evening and looking forward to hearing what you've got to say about OneNote. So um, Thank I'll you. stop Thank talking. You and, um, um, I'll just share then and... Uh, Make sure we get that loaded up. Um, hopefully this will work. Excellent. Does that work, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. Um, well, uh, Afsha, that was great to start with. I feel like um, a, a sort of poor substitute teacher coming in after you really um that was a great explanation of one note i thought it was great um so i, th I suppose for me um i'm going to come in with just how we've used it in school and how we use one note in the classroom to support learning so i'll give a, a sort of bit of a background about the journey that uh, we've been on here at walden hill 
then and like with many schools it started during lockdown and we had to think how we were going to get children to best access uh, learning remotely and um, we landed on OneNote and Class Notebook because it was such a great integrative tool that teachers could use and um, that children could access and um, when we came back from lockdown we thought just as many schools have what can we learn and what can we keep um, from that experience that's really going to enhance the learning for our children and the notebook was was top of the list really because it provides such a rich opportunity for children and I'm going to talk about this in a moment about how it can remove barriers to learning it can support teacher workload um, it can support learning in, in all manner of, of different ways so um, I'm going to start off with in, in a bit of a strange place talking about the structure by looking at um, teams in fact and um, because the way you set assignments and the way you have your notebook it links and posts onto teams it's really important that your teams categories match up with your um, class notebook categories so um, here you've got a year three and a year four example and what you'll see is they're identical in terms of uh, the channels that they have um, because um, when you post assignments they will be specified to go into certain channels for the children to access. Um, what we've noticed with our children, um, because they're so used to this now, is it's it's so easy for them to come in and navigate this absolutely easily. And it's really, really benefited us um, since returning after Christmas because we, you know, we're all going through quite a lot with uh, you know the new variants and, and children isolating. Um, we are able to dial children in, they're able to access the learning on class notebook and it's as if they're in the classroom. Um, you know, I was teaching in year four the other day and we had a child on the laptop. They were using talk partners, accessing the learning. They were able to digitally ink um, together. But it all starts with the foundation of having access and you don't want to as a teacher be having to tell children, oh no, I have posted it in there. Oh no, actually, I think it's in that one. It's really clear it's your English assignment, it's in the English folder and that's where it's going to post. And as Asha's mentioned, it's, it's so important that that structure is is clear. So um, very similar to as she as, as she rightly said there, have the subjects and then as you click on the subjects, I've not got another link to show that, then you can have the half terms and then you can have the the dates. We use the dates at the start as well, just like you say, it's, it's really clear um, and really clear for the children to see which folder to access as the year goes on and the folder gets bigger and bigger it, it does become um, quite overwhelming so we learned that really early on um, that that structure was really really important and the fact that it is ordered in that right way because otherwise the, ch the children would become confused you become confused and if we've got parents at home supporting the learning it needs to be really clear for them um, and needs to be not another thing that they have to think about if their child is is at home um, learning with them. So um, Afsha did a great job with that structure there so I won't sort of go on too much about that so I'm going to go on to actually um, my favourite thing about Class Notebook which is um, removing the barriers and just really a way to level the playing field a little bit for our learners in class um, with specific tools. It's great around um, literacy especially with things like reading progress which they've integrated into the class um, assignments which I'll talk about later but things like immersive reader and the integrated tools and, and I've just spoke about forms um, and that's a really great one so I'm going to start off with um, just a couple here that I found particularly useful and and use with the children is audio and um, forms audio is really great for instructions so if you want the children to complete a task in a particular way, you can give them some audio instructions. Works in, in different ways. So actually, if you're setting the work home, um, they can listen to the audio instructions with a parent. If they're in class and perhaps you want to work with a group and set some of the children off, you can give them the audio instructions. So you don't have to, as we know in class when we're teaching that way, you might be like, right, guys, I want you to explain the instructions to them while you've got some other learners sort of you're wasting a bit of time there and then you've got to explain their instructions actually you know i've got some um children who need that challenge i've set them a separate task i've left some audio instructions for them right you can listen to those instructions you can complete the task i'm going to work here with this guided group and and that really enables you to do that effectively and quickly so it's a it's a really useful tool um, and it integrates that instruction in for the children 
and then we've got uh, forms. So these are the first two um, that I just want to touch upon. So what do they look like um, on there? So audio, it just shows as an audio recording and the children will click on the audio recording. Um, that will play to them what it is that they're expected to do. And um, what's great about it is the children can respond with that. And I was having a conversation with Liam the other day about some math reasoning and, and how some of the children struggle with the barrier of literacy. So we're getting them to explain their reasoning with these, these sentences just to find their explanations. But actually, can't they just put an audio recording on there and explain it to us in that way? Therefore, they are not impeded by that barrier with writing and they can really demonstrate their, their maths knowledge. So I know that's something that um, that we're going to try a little bit more in our maths lessons um, using that problem solving and reasoning. So it sort of works two ways. You can give instructions, but the children can also give answers and, and reasoning to you. Um, you can also draw. So what we found is um, the stylus pens that we have in the devices here are great for certain types of lessons. So if we're just say here, we're, we're feature spotting, so the children can use their devices um, to, to do that, to annotate. But what's great about um, OneNote is then it, it keeps it and the children can refer back to it. So they can quite easily um, click on there and then they can annotate using the stylus pen. We've been working really, really hard um, in class to try and get them to write more um, like they do in their books with the stylus pen, which which is a challenge. And I know, Joe, that um, there's been some work at Moeka, hasn't there, around handwriting using the stylus pens and, and they've had some great success there, haven't they? Yes, absolutely. I think I, it also depends on the particular pens that you purchase too. Um, we've, we've been doing some research into that and that makes a big difference. If you buy the very thin stylus pens, they don't give the, um, it's still nice to write on the screen with, but it doesn't give that finer um, precision that you're after as a teacher. You know, when you're, when you see the children scribing, you want to see kind of like a pencil like, um, replication on the screen don't you and with these yeah. new styluses I think that we've found that so hopefully that will be replicated across the trust for everybody to you know access but yes it's a good point to make. Perfect thank you um, and then the, there's immersive reader so um, immersive reader is uh, integrated within the class notebook so um, immersive reader is fantastic for those children again who uh, reading is the barrier to the learning and it sort of levels the playing field a little bit for them and it it works in, in different ways for di displaying the text but um, this is one I sort of prefer here and it really focuses on each individual word and reads it really clearly um, to the children and now immersive reader is great across lots of different Microsoft apps but really really useful in um, class OneNote so the children can access the learning um, so a different way really to um, um, the audio instructions but again enables children to access the learning really effectively. It doesn't really show on there, but that's supposed to be a different colour. Um, so in terms of um, dyslexia friendly, it's really easy to change the colour settings on there as well to make it easier for children to access. Um, you know, in schools, we think about those children um, with that as a barrier. We will order special books for them that have the, the colour font or you'll have overlays for them. Um, but actually, Class Notebook um, allows you to um, to change that really, really easily. Um, and when you're setting work for the children, it links really well with teams and it's really easy to set assignments for the children. And this is sort of where um, it becomes evident why your teams needs to match your class one note. Um, because when you've got your assignments, you will go through your class teams page. You create the assignment and you can see the option there, which I probably should have circled. We've got class notebook so you can submit a class notebook as an assignment to the children so they can access that learning. Um, but where you put that is, is really important because originally in Teams we were dropping all of our assignments into general and it was just, especially if you were using OneNote more and more, there's four assignments a day every day and it's just hard to organise and when you want to uh, get the children to um, look through it or find the work if they've missed a lesson and they want to recap, it's just a lot to scroll through. So that's where when you're setting your assignment, you can then from here select the area. So if it's maths, it will go into the maths page. You will have the date on the assignment. 
it's a lot clearer to see, a lot clearer to follow. And um, and if you want to look back at it, um, it makes it really, really easy to do so. Um, so that's why it's important not only for your notebook, but also for your teams to have that um, consistent structure. So I think um, one thing I really wanted to touch upon here is that how that then looks in, in the classroom for the learners. And it takes on different forms, really. Um, so I've got a couple of pictures that, that illustrate this. I'm just trying to click along here. OK, so we have got. Children here, you can see um, accessing um, the learning individually. So we've got on the right hand side, we've got a child there that's using an integrated number line on their OneNote to support the learning. Um, we've got uh, some science in the bottom left where children are sort of highlighting and, and using the tools within. And uh, the top left, you've got the stylus pen um, with the children responding to the learning. So this could be um, an example of the teacher's done some input in class and then the work is set on um, the OneNote page on the class notebook and the children annotate that and follow along. What's great about this and what um, I've seen used really effectively um, in year three recently is the teacher can then access the child's class notebook during a lesson and can give uh, live marking, uh, some feedback um, whilst the child is working, which is fantastic um, to see. And the teacher doesn't have to be there even with the child. They could be stood well away from them and access notebooks and I've been in, in lessons where um, a child would say oh Mr Chapel can you check my work for me and I just quick click on their page oh yeah brilliant but have you tried doing this and, and sort of you can do those annotations um, with them as they go so it's a really great tool for working collaboratively with the children during the lesson giving them some marking and you can also use it um, for the children to follow along so you can um, have the children, you can upload um, PowerPoints in there so the children can follow along at their own port, at their own um, stage and they can annotate that. Um, what we really wanted to try and start using was you can use hyperlinks and things in there so the children can be a bit more independent um, in their learning. Um, so you can see there all the children have got a device. They've got the same thing as what's being displayed on the board, which is just a quick quiz at the start of the lesson. And then they'll continue through their learning or using their devices there. Um, what the teacher is able to do, as I mentioned, is to go into their class one notes and to see how they're getting on and, and collaborate with them. Um, so. To summarise, I'm sorry, this has been a bit quicker than I, I thought it would be, Joe. And um, we've got benefits for me, collaboration, um, the children able to collaborate, the teacher able to collaborate with the children. It really simplifies the assignment process because you can click on assignments into Teams, attach the class notebook and, and then set them their OneNote page there. The functionality is fantastic. It levels the playing field um, for children who have particular barriers to their learning and um, it's just really interactive. Uh, there's access for all. I believe that it reduces teacher workload. It's great when you get in in the morning and you think, well, I haven't got to print off all of these worksheets and then trim them. And then the children haven't got to stick paper on top of paper, which always is a baffling concept. But um, something we have to do um, is live marking assessment during it. Um, challenges that we faced are uh, training up staff and children, but that's now a lot easier because we're, we're all more used to it. And it's just something that you, when you first introduce it, it's the same with anything new. It's oh, this is different, but actually having a go was the best thing for us. And what we found was the children were fantastic initially at going, oh, I found out how you can do this. Or have you tried doing this with it? And and before you know it, the children have taught you how to use most of the features on there, which is fantastic. Um, and that's the same for, for staff. They've got to just give it a go. And, and actually, once you do and you realise the benefits, I just don't think there's any going back from it because I think it it just makes such an impact on teaching and learning. Uh, and of course, the main barrier is is having the technology. And um, that's just been so brilliant for us. Having those devices for the children in class, it allows them to access that. But just so many other things beside class notebook as well. Um, there's never any downtime now in lessons because there's always some sort of challenge or something that they can be doing. So, you know, you've completed your maths work and you've you've gone through all of the reasoning. You, fantastic. Right. 
I've set you a century nugget now that's going to consolidate some of that learning. Can you do it for me? So um, the technology has been great and Class Notebook's been a big part of that. So um, that brings me to the end of mine, Joe. Thank you very much. It's great. Thank you so much, David. And I, was, I just like the way that you put benefits and challenges. So it's still very positive because challenges can be, you know, taken in a positive way. I really like that. But I also um, like the fact that you mentioned that it's it's that um, instant feedback, isn't it? That you can give on that on that notebook, yeah. you know, in the lesson. Yeah, there and then real time. Um, it, it's just so powerful. Um, and the other point that you made as well about the audio tool and how you can get that in class flipped model going. So yeah. either with audio or with video clips, you know, setting off a group of children on one task, either with the audio tool with the teacher's voice or a video clip of the teacher, yeah. they can get on with that and you can then teach another group in the classroom. Yeah, just a perfect way of, of looking at how OneNote can be used there. I just think of all the lost learning time I've had when I've been, right, I really want to try this and set you off because actually you're ready to move on and, and, and I need to work with you and you giving instructions here while you can't help that group there. So they're just sort of waiting for you, listening to instructions they don't need. And yeah, so so that's that's a really, really useful way to use that audio. So it's a way of almost duplicating the teacher now, isn't it? We always said, oh, I'd really like there to be, you know, three of three of me in the classroom mm -hmm. so I can reach all yeah. those children. In a way, if you plan the technology correctly, you know, um, you could, not every lesson, I know that's a lot, but in, you know, some lessons you could really get that in a, very powerful model there, um, which is what you discussed, which was which was great that you brought that up because I think that's what teachers need to see as well and to start really thinking about moving forward. How can they be creative with this now as well? And like you say, be brave enough to try it. Um, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Ashley, were you going to say something? No, no. Was, thank you for that, David. It's really informative. Thank you. Um, yeah, just before we do finish, I just wanted to also mention um, and just bring up um, just one slide of a PowerPoint and just have a, a discussion really very quickly around it with um, yourselves. If I can get my device to work, might, um, might not want to, I've been having a few problems with it today. Let me see. It's this slide here. Can you see that? Does that come up? Mm -hmm. So if I just... Um, Go to that current slide. It's, it was just the structure of, we spoke about the structure in OneNote in terms of how to set up the sections and the subsections and, and the pages. But it's also then, and Afsha and I have, have um, talked about this quite a lot, I know, but how to actually d display your, um, your lesson, I suppose, as it were, on the page or the children's learning on the page. You know, that in itself as well is, something that I think teachers need to be quite consistent with. Have you got any um, recommendations there, David? Well, I think it's just structuring it in a way that's that's clear to the children. I really love this example here, Joe. And actually, I think just the simple lines that separate the info just makes it so much clearer to see, because the, the problem is with um, notebook. It, and the great thing is it's infinite, isn't it? It just sort of goes on and on and on. So you can add so many things on there but actually it becomes unwieldy so um it's it's about having clear headings for what things are and whether you need to when you need to access them so if you take a maths example if you've got an in focus a guide of practice and independent task making that really clear on the one note page um and what i like which we've we've not used which i might now steal are just the clear divides of of that just to make it really clear to the children so um i think that's great because they can get lost and i know initially when we were trialing things children would be doing the wrong um wrong piece of learning because it's just a big page. So where, where do I, I'm just going to start here um, because when you copy things in to one, it sometimes they'll go massive, won't they? And you've got to sh shrink things down. So, you, you know, your formatting can be a bit of an issue there. But no, I like, I like the divides, definitely. Yeah, I, I, Asha, I know um, we've spoken about this, haven't we, before? Because obviously I think you've you obviously see lots of different lessons in maths and Ver, um, various uh, maths books as well and when we got to the one note I think it was a bit of an enigma wasn't it so I know we had lots of discussions could you, is there anything else you'd add to that no I absolutely think that playing around with it and kind of having a consistent structure wherever that may be the the what I like about even the divides that we've kind of discussed here is that 
it, you can be really fluid with that. So you've got a few independent questions, but you're not stopping children from moving on or carrying on. But you can say, right, stop. You don't need to do those next few questions, but you can move on to the challenge. So rather than setting out, I've seen before previously, um, teachers distributing different things to different children. Um, and that can almost limit some of them by doing that. Because actually in that lesson, if you predetermined some of the bits, oh, this child's going to get onto this, but this child's not. In that moment, it's not as easy to start distributing other pages in that moment to and another group of children that may need that. So I think having a bit of a continuum like this is here, you can almost use it as a fluid type of worksheet rather than it being um, something that you distribute to certain children and not to others when you may need a bit of um, thinking about, oh, this child may need something slightly different, but actually you can move them on if they're ready to be moved on. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You kind of can personalise their pace, I suppose. They 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 can control that pace, can't they, in that lesson? Um, so, yes, hopefully that structure, as you say. I think, But I do think, as we've, we've kind of um, come to really that, that conclusion is really have a look at that structure as well, not just the one note, but actually the, the actual page itself. How are you setting that out for the children? But also if you're using it to teach with, and this is moving away obviously from the class notebook, but if you use one note to teach with, obviously you think about the structure you're using there as well as the teaching tool. But I just thought I'd mention that um, very briefly there at the end, but I just wanted to finish too by just mentioning that um, the EdTech program, if um, you are a school that is re-watching this um, webinar, then the EdTech program website is here. And if you do want to request some support, this is the button here, the request long term support you need to click. If you just want very short, um, rapid support, then you can just get three hours worth of support by clicking on the top button there. But the long term support is from six hours to 30 hours of support there. So please feel free to go onto that site. Um, there is another website that I did want to show you. Bear with me. Um, it is the Discovery Schools Trust website here, just because we wanted to point out that um, throughout this process we are um, holding um, open days. So if you go and have a look for information about these open days, um, please sign up to them, come along. Our schools are um, have been very kind in um, offering um, support. You can go in, you can watch blended learning lessons, you can talk to the staff, you can find out what they've discovered on this journey with EdTech. So it's really useful. And then at the bottom there, there is access to a monthly newsletter as well. And if you have missed any of the webinars, you can go and find out some more about that, those as well on the website. So um, I will also just finish with one final um, mention of OneNote. If you do want to do your own training on it, you can go onto the MEC, uh, the Microsoft Educator Centre, and you can find out more about OneNote by doing this pathway here, and it gives you um, lots of information there too. So um, I know you will have found today's um, session really useful. I'd just like to finish by thanking David and Afsha. Um, thank you so much for presenting and taking the time to do it as well. I know um, it's um, you know, you got very busy and it's um, always an extra when I come along and say, could you could you please present? So thank you so much. And uh, thank you everyone else for joining this evening. Um, if you do think of any questions in the meantime, um, please feel free to contact myself. Um, and if the question is for David or Ashra, I will forward it on to them um, so that they can uh, contact you afterwards. But uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and um, please have a look at the webinars. Our next one is next Tuesday and it's a leadership webinar. Please go onto the website to have a look. Mm. And um, thank you very much for joining us. Great. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>